So we need to learn how to balance nuclear reactions. So let us look at this process, okay? It's very different than balancing chemical reactions. Chemical reactions that we knew we had five oxygens over here, we better have five oxygens over here, right? But in a nuclear reaction, since they are changing, we're not going to make sure that the atoms are balanced, but we have to make sure that something else is balanced. We have to make sure that we are given the mass number, that's the top number that you see there, the 12, and the atomic number, that's the bottom number that you see here, which is the six, okay? We haven't talked about those numbers in a long time, so pause and ponder that. Atomic number is the number of protons. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, okay? Since they are changing, we're not gonna make sure the identity of the atoms are staying constant, but what has to remain constant is the number of protons and neutrons being balanced on both sides, okay? That is what we're going to look for. It is, it's not the, that there's always the same number of protons and always the same number of neutrons, but the number of protons and neutrons on this side, if you add them together, have to equal the number of protons and neutrons on this side um, if you add them together. So that is what we have to balance here. So before we can actually balance it, we have to look at all the different types of nuclear particles that we are going to deal with when we are writing these reactions. So you need to be familiar with these symbols, okay? We'll, we'll walk across them here by name one at a time. The first one is a way of representing a proton, okay? Why would the bottom number be one and the top number be one? Well, in a proton, the bottom number tells you how many protons you have. It's a proton, so there's one proton. The top number tells you the number of protons and neutrons you have. Well, there's no neutrons, there's only a proton, so if you add one plus zero, you get one, so that's why the top number is a one. Now you can either re represent it with a P for proton, you could represent it with an H, because an H means it's a proton, all right? So we can use both uh, symbols. In nuclear reactions, we care nothing about the electrons. We will never be considering charges or anything like that because this is only the nucleus that we are interested in. The next one that we see there is a neutron. Let's examine those numbers. Why in a neutron is the bottom number a zero and the top number a one? Well, let's think about it, okay? The bottom number tells you how many protons are in this particle. Well, if it's a neutron, it doesn't have any protons, so it's a zero. The top number tells you how many protons plus neutrons you have, so it is a one, okay? So now, I wanna clarify this bottom number for just a minute. I said it's the number of protons, because that's what we've always ta taught you, okay? But we represented it with a Z. Now, if you think back to effective nuclear charge, the number of protons and the effective, nu I mean, the nuclear charge were one and the same. What we want to think about in this bottom number is not the number of protons, but we want to think of it as the nuclear charge, which is in a nucleus, what does it have? It has a bunch of protons and neutrons. The nuclear charge is all of the protons. So it seems synonymous with number of protons and how many positive charges are in that nucleus. And for a neutron, there are no positive charges associated with it. The reason I bring that nuclear charge up comes with our next one. There is a nuclear particle, okay, which is a beta particle, okay? Beta particle. A beta particle is really an electron, but it's not an electron that's coming from out here where the shells, the subshells, and the orbitals are. It is a, a particle that comes out of that nucleus. So when we look at and we examine its uh, symbol, we can use a beta, but we're gonna think about it as an electron, so we can use either one, but let's think about its charge, okay? It doesn't have any protons in it, so, but it's not right to put a zero. It does carry a charge. What charge does an electron carry? 
it carries a negative one charge. So now we see a minus one there, either way you write it, associated with it, but the top number is certainly going to be a zero. Why is it a zero? Well, this is still the number of protons and the number of neutrons, and there are none, so that number will stay at a zero. Now, something we have never seen before is a positron. A positron is exactly like an electron in mass, except it carries a positive charge. So a positive tron, positron, as you see there, looks like the symbols I have written up here, but we are replacing the minus one with a plus one, okay? It has no protons and neutrons, so it's not carrying a mass number, but it carries a charge of a plus one. And the last one that we need to be familiar with is an alpha particle. An alpha particle is just a helium nucleus. So let's think about a helium nucleus. Helium is the element number two, so it has two protons. So we have a nuclear charge of two. A helium nucleus also has two neutrons. So it has two protons plus two neutrons. That is four for its mass number. So you see that written up there. It is equally correct to write an alpha particle with the HE or with the symbol alpha. So those are our nuclear particles um, that we will deal with. So now we're ready to balance the reactions, okay? So if we're gonna balance the reactions. I think I will move to the screen here. I thought I'd do that over on the uh, light board, but let's write here directly on our screen. What we need to do is we need to figure out what number sits here and what number sits here. Once we do that, we can identify the substance by looking at a periodic table, okay? So what we have to realize is that the sum of these numbers on this side, which if I add them together, it equals 13, must give me the sum of the numbers on this side. So we ask ourselves, what has to sit right there so that these two numbers add up to 13? Well, that would be 11, okay? The same thing is true up on the top. The sum of these two numbers, which is 27, have to equal the sum of these two numbers. They also must add up to 27. Well, if this one is four, what would this one have to be? It would have to be 23. So then we go to the periodic table. Periodic table is in order of the elements and what element is element number 11? It's sodium. So when we balance equations, we are not balancing um, the elements, we're changing our elements. We are balancing the atomic number and the new, I mean the atomic mass and identifying the substance, okay? This top, well, we don't even worry about what it's called because we're gonna focus on uh, radi radioactivity, but let's do this next one. This is actually an example of radioactivity because I'm starting with an element, an isotope of an element that is spontaneously getting rid of a beta particle. Okay, so we're going to examine it and figure out what else is there. Now, these two numbers have to add up to that number. So what plus a negative one equals 19? Well, that would be 20. Okay, the top two numbers have to be balanced. Well, 40 plus it on this side has to be 40 on the other side. Well, if that's a zero, then this is still a 40. So now we have to figure out what X is. We pull up a periodic table. You might want to pause and, and do this yourself. But you pull up a periodic table and you're looking for the element 20 and the element 20 is calcium. So we would put there calcium 40. That's how you say this. This is called calcium dash 40 if you wanted to write it out. So that is how you balance nuclear reactions. This reaction over here is an example of radioactivity because we're starting with an isotope, we're starting with a single nucleus that is breaking apart, changing spontaneously. How do I know it's spontaneous and the one above is not? Because the one above, I need to supply the proton. 
the proton gets bombarded into that magnesium at high speed and it converts to something else. That's actually called a transmutation.